Hello, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the most essential string function, and that is substring. You can solve nearly anything by using substring and some ifs. So here's my form. I've got a button, I've got a text box. And in my next video, I'm going to do some useful things with substring. But in this video, I'm going to show you how it works, because you need to understand how it works before you attempt to do anything with it. So I'm going to create a variable, and I'm going to call that stuff, which isn't a great name, and it's going to be of type string. And I'm going to assign it a value on the fly, like baseball. All right, so we've got something called stuff. It's a string, and it's set or initialized to baseball. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another just temporary variable. Well, these are all temporary, but I'm going to call it result. And I'm going to make this a string as well. And this is where we're going to store whatever we get out of our substring function call. So I want to call substring on the string called stuff. So if I want to call that, I write something like stuff, which is the name of my string, dot substring. And substring takes two arguments usually. You've got a beginning and you've got an end. right? And so the thing to keep in mind when you're talking about a string is that they start at position zero. So a three-letter word like cat has three string positions, zero, one, and two. A word like baseball, well, let's just see how it works. Uh, basically, if I wanted the word base out of baseball, then I would do something like zero. That means start at the beginning, which is the first B. And if I want four letters, then I say four. And the, the, the uh, confusion usually comes from people getting carried away. They do something like zero, three, thinking we want spots zero through spot three. But no, you want to start at position zero, and you want four characters. right? So kind of different contexts for each of the numbers. Uh, so this right here is a call. But what I want to do is I want to store that in something. So I'm going to say result equals stuff.substring. And then I'm going to. Uh, spit out basically. I'm going to take uh, so in that text box on my form right here, I'm going to spit out the results. So text results text equals result. All right, let's run this thing and hopefully when I run it, I get something like base. All right, so notice zero means start at the very beginning and four means give me four characters. Uh, this can go very wrong if you do something like 25. Think about for a second, why is that going to be a problem? Notice that it's going to compile just fine. What's going to happen is it's going to crash once I press result. And wait for it. Wait for it. There it is. All right. So we get something to the effect of index must refer to a location within the string. We just went too far. All right. So if you try and do a substring, you just think about what this looks like in memory. Baseball is an eight letter word and you're trying to look at spot 25. It's just not going to work. And let's just do one more thing. Um, so let's say you wanted, let's go spot three. Give me two characters. What's that going to give me? All right, your common person would probably think, oh, we're going to start at spot S and give me the SEB. But you remember, we're going to go to spot three and spot three is actually going to be the E. So what's going to be returned should be the E, the B, and the A. All right, so this is three characters. This is spot three, which is actually the fourth character in the word. Let's run it and see if I know what I'm talking about. And apparently this time I do. So that is the trick with substring. It's not really a substring trick, though. You just need to understand that regardless of what we're talking about, whether it's a list box, whether it's an array, and or whether it's a string, um, things always start at spot zero. So when I say something like spot three, I really mean the fourth character in the string. Um, there's only so many things that we can do with this kind of uh, information right here. But once you start using the dot length attribute of a string, then you can actually start doing some more powerful things. In my previous video, I examined starts with. And if you think about starts with, starts with is probably just really a substring implementation where you start at zero and you go to the length of whatever it is that you pass in. in my next video, more advanced things with substring. Thanks for watching.